Let's recap last night's game between the Bearcats and East Carolina, a dominant win for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to our Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel. Follow it too to get an alert every time we drop a new episode. My name is Alex Frank, your host each and every day here on Lockdown Bearcats. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Cincinnati winners last night, 83-55 to over East Carolina. The Bearcats now 12-6 and on the season, 3-2. and in American Athletic Conference play, Landers Nolly the second with a very, very stellar performance. A double-double, 20 points, 10 rebounds, 7 for 15 from the floor. He made four threes. David DeJulius um, with a double-double, 11 points, 12 assists. He was 4 of 11 from the floor. He played a team-high 31 minutes. Jeremiah Davenport, 16 points, 6 of 12 from the field, that was off the bench. He made four threes, tying Landers Nolly for the team lead. Cincinnati uh, from three last night, 14 for 26, 10 for 14 in the first half. In fact, the Bearcats made 13 shots in the first half. 10 were from three-point range. That doesn't mean, though, they were three or, or, or three of 17 when they weren't shooting threes. How about that? Victor Locken had eight points and six rebounds. He was three of six from the floor, played 27 minutes. Uh, Josh Reed and Dan Skillings Jr., the two freshmen, combined for 15 points off the bench, five rebounds. Reed was a perfect three of three. Skillings Jr., three of four. Skillings Jr. played 16 minutes. Reed played 14 minutes. So good performances from the freshmen. Um, Kalui Zikpe played... Uh, four minutes, he made one shot, had one rebound, also a two block shots. So good performance from him and his limited action. Uh, the Bearcats defensively, very stellar performance. Uh, 46 to 29 on the boards in terms of rebounding. Now that's also offensive. Um, ECU was held to just 20 of 58 from the, from the field. Four of 19 from three, including a one of 10 in the first half. The Bearcats also limited ECU to just five points off the bench. So... All in all, a very good performance by the Bearcats defensively and offensively. As Cincinnati now improves to 12-6 and six and 3-2 and two in American Athletic Conference play. Next up for the Bearcats will be East, or I'm sorry, SMU. That's a Saturday game. That is a Saturday um, afternoon game. That game will be at 4 o'clock. Let me just confirm that. Yep, 4 o'clock on ESPNU from the Moody Coliseum in Dallas. It's the first of two straight road games. The Bearcats back on the road for two straight road games. They'll be at USF on Wednesday before the Memphis home game on Sunday, January 22nd, and then at Houston on the 28th. So plenty of positives to take away from last night's game. I'll get into all of those after I tell you how this episode of Locked On Bearcats is brought to you by Bet Online right now, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to basketball. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball. Available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So, the Cincinnati Bearcats, in their win last night, there were um, several things that stood out to me. Um, first, if, if Jeremiah Davenport, could have that kind of performance every game, including Memphis, which the Bearcats still have to face twice, and Houston, which they face in two weeks from Saturday. This team can be really good, and this team can win some games that they haven't won 
since probably the Houston game when John Brandon was the head coach. Jeremiah Davenport is really settling into this role nicely. There, he, there have been three games since he has been, um, you could say demoted, um, but he has taken the role of sixth man in stride. And outside of a poor performance against Houston on Sunday, his first three games in this role have been really good. You go back to the Wichita State game last week when he had 22 points, including six threes. He had 16 points last night. Since coming off the bench, he's made 10 threes over three games. He's, I mean, if you take away his performance against Houston, he has 38 points on 14 of 24 shooting and 10 of 17 from three. So those are really, really good numbers. But when, when we get to the big games, he can't just have two points against Houston and six points against Xavier or in the Maui Invitational only score a combined 21 points in three games. Uh, that's simply not going to cut it. Against NKU, he only had eight. So he's playing well in, yes, games that matter, but he's got to play well in every single game because at the end of the day, I still think he's one of this team's four best players with the Julius, Nolly, and Lockett. But Jeremiah Davenport has got to just put it together for a string of games. And so too to Cincinnati. Keep in mind the Bearcats have not won back-to-back conference games yet this season. That's something they still need to do, and they can do that on Saturday. But I look at what I'm seeing from him in this role. I think it helps the Bearcats get another big in the starting lineup. I think it gives the Bearcats a spark off the bench. I've always said Jeremiah Davenport's the spark plug of this team. That goes back to his freshman year. I really still believe that. Um, David DeJulius, his performance last night reminds me of a performance Jaron Cumberland had. This was back in 2018 in the quarterfinals of the AAC tournament. And Jaron Cumberland in that game had zero points. But Mick Cronin said he was the best player on the floor. And you could have asked yourself, well, why was he the best player on the floor? He didn't score any points. Jaron Cumberland led the team with eight assists in that game. Now, I've said that the Bearcats don't even play Nevada if Jaron Cumberland doesn't, if if it's not for Jaron Cumberland, because he had 27 points in the Bearcats' uh, win over Georgia State in the first round. They don't play Nevada if it's not for Jaron Cumberland. They don't win the American Athletic Conference, regular and tournament championships, if it's not for Jaron Cumberland. They don't. Over the last eight games of that season, Jaron Cumberland was the best player on the team. There, not a question about it. The Bearcats don't win those games if it's not for him. And so David DeJulius last night with his 12 assists, it makes me think if he can do that, it, let, 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 let's say he's held in check against Houston in two weeks. If he can impact the game in other ways like assists, I'm telling you right now, this team is going to be fine. This team can win any game that comes their way. This team can win any big game that comes their way. Because he's going to impact the game in other ways. He doesn't have to score to be this team's best player. And we saw that with Jaron. Jaron Cumberland against UCF in 2019. He was held in check that game. But he had the biggest assist of the night. Justin Jenner and just to Justin Jennifer who hit that three. Everybody in the building thought Jaron Cumberland was going to try and score. Instead, he pulled a Michael Jordan, the John Paxson. Jennifer bangs the three. Crowd goes insane. Bearcats end up winning that game by five. It's those plays. It's impacting the game in other ways besides scoring that are going to make this team really, really good. I still believe this team's best basketball is ahead of them. I really do. But Davenport's got to be more consistent. Like, great you can do it against ECU. ECU is a team the Bearcats should just get the heck out of the gym with. And great they took care of business last night in the way they did. But when the going gets tough, when you face a team like Temple again, when you face Memphis, when you face Houston again, by the end of January, and really, these, really this upcoming stretch, if you can bank these next two wins on the road and come back home 
14 and 6, 5 and 2 in AAC play, I think you're going to be in a good position to split Memphis and Houston. You come out of that 15 and uh 15 and and 7 and 5 or 6 and 3 in American Athletic Conference play, knowing that your only really tough game left is Memphis, I think you're going to I think that's good. I still think this team's best basketball is ahead of them. But they got to be more consistent. So plenty, plenty more to get to. But now it's time for me to tell you why this episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by Built Bar. Can we pause the pod for a second? Okay, we're paused. Great, because you got to try this. I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper. White chocolate peppermint granola. It's Bilt's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff. Bilt puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried Bilt bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built, literally. They're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories, only 130. Just sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life forever. I'm not kidding. There will be a time before you try these new built flavors and the magical, wonderful time afterwards. You're probably wondering which new flavor is my favorite. An unanswerable question to say the least. They're all unbelievable and they're all different. So you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built. You got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. All right, plenty more to get to this week. Later today, the live room with yours truly and Russ Heltman recapping last night's game, uh, talking about Tom Manning and Brian Brown being introduced by Scott Satterfield, some transfers rolling in, including a pair from Arizona State. Uh, We've got plenty more to get to with this upcoming week at SMU. SMU, by the way, currently 6-11 overall, 1-3 in American Athletic Conference play, so should be a win for Cincinnati. South Florida still hasn't won a conference game. They're only 7-10, and 10, so um, the opportunities are there for the Bearcats to start banking some wins and maybe building that NCAA tournament resume. Thanks for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. For your second listen, check out our brand-new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court, plus hear from big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape, Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. For Locked On Bearcats, I'm Alex Frank. Have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you tomorrow, or actually later today, with Russ Hellman live, podcast from tomorrow right here on Locked On Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Alex Frank for Locked On Bearcats. Have a great rest of your day.